You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at bbmglobalnetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Paradigm with host Mikaya. Mikaya will empower you to become aware of your vast potential that's available in each and every one of us in alignment with our soul's desires. So please welcome the host of Living in a New Paradigm, Mikaya Hart. Hello, everybody. This is Mikaya Hart, host of Living in the New Paradigm, brought to us by BBM Global Networks and TuneIn Radio. And today I'm going to talk about this game of life that we're playing here on planet Earth. Um, how can we play this game so that it brings us joy? How can we play this game so that we get what we want? How can we play this game in ways that really fully satisfy us? And then there's one more key question. Can we change the rules of this game? So those are the kinds of questions I'm going to be addressing today. Um, now, if you've listened to this program before, you already know this, but I do need to say it um, at the beginning of every show because it's um, a pretty radical way of thinking about our existence. Um, the the basis of all my beliefs uh, and everything I'm talking about is that we are vast beings of consciousness, beings of spirit, who are choosing to manifest here and now in this reality on planet Earth. We, are choose we chose to do that and we very often had some very specific ideas about what we wanted to experience on planet Earth in this uh, physical body that has all kinds of limitations, that that vastness which chose to incarnate, that vastness has no limitations. It doesn't know time. It doesn't know powerlessness. It can manifest things instantly. It knows everything, it, everything, it knows everything. I mean, I know that's impossible to comprehend. It is impossible for us to comprehend an existence of that kind because our whole lives are boundaried by, by time, by the awareness that we are going to die, um, by the awareness of our fragility really, our, and our needs, our physical needs, as well as our emotional needs. Um, and obviously, especially as very young children, we're completely dependent on those around us to take care of us. So, um, so it's pretty impossible. It is absolutely impossible, let's say it radically and truthfully for us to really comprehend the experience of the being who decided to incarnate. So, why did this being decide to incarnate in a limited, in, in a limited physical body? Um, let me answer that in a generalized way. It wanted to experience limitation. You know, when you've never experienced something, when you've never even seen it, you can barely, 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 barely imagine it. 
then it's kind of fascinating. And of course, that being has no sense of fragility whatsoever. It cannot be harmed. Um, and so it has no fear. It has no awareness of pain. So it looks planet like Earth and, and thinks, hmm, it looks kind of interesting what's going on there. I can't, can't quite imagine this. I think I'll have to give it a go. <sighs> so when we get here, we've, okay, so, so we're, we're playing, uh, the important thing is, actually, I, I do need to say this, the important thing that makes all this happen the way it happens makes it unfold the way it unfolds. It's that we, when we're born, we forget our vastness. We completely forget it. We really believe that we are human beings, that we're fragile, that we're going to die. We may never exist again. Our, all, our whole existence is this fragile physical existence. Um. And that's what makes the whole game really, really fascinating. Um, because we really, we really do believe this, and it's it's our life experience. You know, our life experience tells us that that's what's true. So it makes the game. When we're so we're we're very afraid of death because for many of us we think it's annihilation and it is actually essential for us to believe well it's essential for us to be afraid of death because <laughs> if we were not afraid of death at all you know we we'd we'd spill some orange juice. And we'd just die because it'd be easier than cleaning it up. Being that afraid of death and that awareness of vulnerability and fragility makes the game very compelling. Very compelling. It is an incredible game. I mean, this planet is incredibly beautiful. It's exciting, very exciting. All kinds of options are available to us here that are not available to, um, to a being of spirit. I mean, a being of spirit can't taste a tomato. It can't taste anything at all. It can't touch. It can't experience touch. It can't make love. It can't have children. It can't have an experience of rain pouring down on its head. It can't have the experience of the sun shining down on our skin and warming us up. It can't have the experience of walking or running or laughing or dancing. So it is really just in a very, in its simplest forms, life on planet Earth is fascinating. And we would do very well to appreciate how just how fascinating that is. So let's compare it to a game of football. Um, it's interesting how here on planet Earth we have actually um, created uh, games that are in many ways quite parallel to the game of life itself. Um, so I'm going to talk more about football, um, after this commercial break. Um, this is Mikaya Hart with Living in the New Paradigm brought to us by BBM Global Networks and TuneIn Radio. And, um, I'll be back in just a moment. So uh, hang in there. Abuse happens every moment of every day. 
According to national statistics in the United States, every two minutes, someone is sexually assaulted, and every 10 minutes, a report of child abuse is made. Those currently struggling with abuse, or if you know someone who has been the victim of abuse, you are not alone. Whether physical, mental, emotional, or sexual, no, there is hope, there is help, there is healing. Author Tammy Hall has written a book from her own account of abuse called Journey of Courage that can guide you through your own personal journey of healing. Stop struggling through life. It's your story. It's your healing. And it can begin with the first turn of the page. Visit www.journeyofcourage.com to begin your path to becoming the person you were ultimately created to be. Healed. Hopeful. Happy. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. Hi, everybody. This is Mikaya Hart back again with Living in the New Paradigm, brought to us by BBM Global Networks and TuneIn Radio. And um, now we're going to talk about football. First of all, I should say I, I know nothing about football and it doesn't interest me at all. But um, the reason we're going to talk about it is because uh, football is a game that many people on this planet are really, really they're really into it whether they play it or they watch it they're really really into it they're really really gripped by it and they're moved by it they get really angry and they get really happy excited and that's what the game of life is like now you may say in the game of life but people die well yes I mean, part of the game of life is you get born and you die. You can't be born without dying. Dying is fine. Dying is a perfectly fine thing to do. Um, uh, however, you can also then say, but what about people who are really sick or people who have horrible accidents? And Yes, well... People get hurt in football. People actually get really hurt in football sometimes. People get hurt in most sports, and yet there are many, many sports fanatics on this planet. Many people who just can't live without their hit of football or some other sport. It's what brings them to life, you might say. And that's an interesting thing to think about. And I, I will be talking more about sports um, because it is a way of channeling energy so that um, – of channeling life force energy through us. And we are more alive when we allow life force energy to flow through, f freely through us. And we do have a tendency to try to quell our, our life energy um, without realizing, of course, what we're doing. But um, we're taught to, you know, uh, behave in an adult fashion and keep our emotions under control and um, minimize our expressions of enthusiasm and so on and so on. And that is uh, quelling our life force. Um, what I'd actually like to talk about now is a car accident that I had. Um, this is um, – this you know, personal stories are sometimes the best way to learn something. So 
this this personal experience of mine does um, explain – well, I'll just tell you the story. Um, I had a car accident in South Australia, the state of South Australia, um, in Australia. And it was a pretty serious car accident. My car skidded and hit another car head on, and the driver of that car died. And I, um, I had various injuries. Um, so uh, the question I'm going to, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to answer by this story is why one might choose to have a car accident. And let me say right here and now that a lot of the difficult things that happen to us on the journey through life during the, in the game of life, they, um, they're not so much con conscious choices. They're more like a, a default expression of the fear that is around us. And there is a lot of fear around us. Um, and if we're, um, if we're not careful to, um, not to engage with that fear, we can unconsciously engage with it even when we, even when we think we're not. And then it will manifest through us in some way by perhaps an accident or, um, an illness, some such thing. In any case, um, so I, um, I had this accident um, and I woke up in hospital with four policemen around the bed. And um, so in South Australia, if there's some serious accident occurs and someone is seriously injured or died or dies, then um, it's generally, well, it is, uh, there's a law that somebody must be arrested and held responsible for it. Now, you can see why that happens because of the history, both the white and the Aboriginal histories of Australia. Um, uh, so let's not go over why that happens. Certainly, um, I ended up having to get having to get an attorney and going and pleading guilty and going to court because if I hadn't pled guilty, um, it, the court case would have dragged on for probably years and I'd have had to stay in Australia, which would have been because I was on bail. I was under arrest and on bail. Um, so, um, so anyway, really to cut the long story short, um, the prosecuting attorney fully acknowledged to my face that he knew the accident was um, – it was, it was an accident. My car had skidded on some gravel, and he knew I wasn't responsible, and he was holding out for the minimum sentence, um, which was a suspended sentence. Um, and so – you know, I knew when he told me that, he told me that to my face, and then I knew that it would all be all right. But you can imagine that when you're in a serious state of shock and you have a fractured skull and fractured ribs and fractured foot, um, it's pretty unpleasant to be ar arrested. So, um, so you know, the, the whole experience was just nightmarish and made me really question reality. But what really was one of the hardest things to deal with was the shock. Um, what shock does is it throws you out of your sense of normalcy. And so you have to rebuild a sense of normalcy. Um, we're up for a commercial break now, so I'll continue this this discussion um, after the break. This is Mikaya Hart with Living in the New Paradigm, brought to us by BBM Global Networks and Tune in radio. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. 
president and founder of Big Heart Bridges. Her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Dupula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapoulis drives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. Hello, everybody. This is Mikaya Hartz, back again with Living in a New Paradigm. We're talking about an accident that I had in Australia. Um, It happened in 2013. Um, I'm talking about this car accident to give an example of how, why, one might choose to... um, one might choose something unpleasant like a car accident. Um, So let's, um, uh, let's, well, you know what? I actually, I won't recap a little because you can always listen to it. Um, Let's just, um, let's just cut it a little shorter actually, because I heard an awful lot of stories I could tell. So um, I was dealing with shock and trying to build up, you know, trying to work out why this was all happening and what it was all about. And in the midst of all this, I was frequently having um, some very strange emotions. Um, Like one of the key ones was um, a feeling of nostalgia, a very intense feeling of nostalgia. Um, So anyway, I got through the court case, uh, went to stay with a friend, began to feel safe again, and I rented a car, and I was out driving, and I thought to myself, I must buy some milk on the way home, and I felt this intense joy, which really took me by surprise. What am I so joyful about? I've been buying milk all my life. Um, and the answer was... Well, the answer that came to me, the only answer was, this emotion did not come from this lifetime. The shock of the accident had thrown me, uh, this isn't quite correctly put, I, I could say it had thrown me into another lifetime, or I could say it opened a doorway where another lifetime could connect with me. In any case, what happened then is that I sat down and for a period of a couple of weeks, I did some very serious meditation um, and really got some wonderful answers to questions. And what became absolutely apparent and undeniable is that I had been asked this this other life. There was actually more than one other life, but... um, but there was one central life um, that I had, well, you know, it's hard to say. It's hard to talk about other lives, 
past lives as most people think of them. Um, they're cr created from a place where there is no time. So th the concept of past and future don't exist. So it's much more correct to say other lives. But um, so this other life that I was recalling was a life that had been extremely traumatic where um, the the person had been arrested in the UK and taken to Australia, which was a penal colony at the time, and had no chance ever of returning home. And that's where the nostalgia came from. And the joy about the milk, of course, in that like three, four centuries ago, um, you couldn't buy milk uh, you unless you knew the milkmaid or the cow or lived on a farm or something. So being able to just walk into a store and buy milk was, was a, a wonderful thing. In any case, the point was, in this space beyond lives, where we are beings of spirit and we're choosing to incarnate, in that space, we make agreements with all kinds of other beings vast beings of consciousness, we make agreements with them um, about what we will do in this particular lifetime. We And we agree certain roles we'll, we'll play and so on and so on. I had been approached by this, this being who had lived this life and been condemned to um, the penal colony of Australia, I'd been approached and asked to help to resolve and release the trauma that had been experienced in that. And my willingness to go through an accident and then an arrest um, and court case and so on, my willingness to do that and do it consciously somehow helped those other lives to be resolved. Now, I will tell you, <laughs> I will not ever agree to do such a thing again in this lifetime because it was too hard. It was too unpleasant. But when we're in that space between lives where we don't have a sense of time or pain, there is a tendency to agree to things that um, we may regret when we're down here in these physical bodies. Um, regret is not something that the vastness that we are ever will experience. It's a very human emotion. Um, well, all emotions are human. Um, in any case, I hope that helps you to understand why you might choose to, um, to have an experience of that kind. Um, it, it's, uh, yes, it's chosen from such a very, 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 very different perspective. And in this situation, the car accident was not only a learning experience for me and certainly renewed my commitment to my original intention, which is to bring more peace and compassion to this planet. It certainly did that. So it did something for me. But it also helped these other people, these other beings. <laughs> so let's talk more about other ways of playing the game. Okay, illnesses and accidents, another um, there are lots of reasons why they might choose illnesses or accidents. They might be excuses to die. I mean, we're all going to die. And if we all just suddenly drop down dead, that, that well, the rules of the game don't allow that. You have to die of something. So you have to get a sickness that somebody can label, or you have to have an accident or or something like that. And I'll talk a little more about this in a few 
in a few minutes, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and uh, then I'll be right back. This is Mikaya Hart with Living in the New Paradigm, brought to us by BBM Global Networks and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back after this break. French Rastafarian baker Chef Hugues Mott is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Chef Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Uvmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoub.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. Hello, everyone. This is Mikaya Hart, back with Living in the New Paradigm, brought to us by BBM Global Networks and TuneIn Radio. And we're talking about why one might choose to have unpleasant experiences. <laughs> um, so I was saying there are many reasons, many reasons, actually, why we might choose to have accidents or illnesses. It might be time to die. It may also be time to wake up. Accidents and illnesses are very often wake-up calls. It might, in the case of, well, in the case of either choice, actually, there might be a need to rest. And many of us spend a great deal of time running around, being very busy all the time. And uh, resting is actually a very important activity, especially at this time of change. Um, another reason for any kind of illness that involves, a, particularly ones that involve a high fever, um, is that it's, it, it, there's a need to, or a desire, perhaps better put, to change the cellular memories of the body. And um, you can, when you have a high fever, you actually can literally, literally burn out those old, um, those, those old belief systems that you're done with that are held in, your, in the cells of your body. You can actually literally burn them out. So being ill is not always a bad thing. Um, sometimes it can open us up. Um, I recently had a fairly high fever and um, it opened my third eye right up. Um, you know, what we call um, delirium is uh, very often an opening, uh, an opening to be able to see things that others cannot. So in any case, given that in these human bodies, we would prefer to minimize the number of accidents and illnesses that we have, how do we do that? And what this really comes back to 
is how do we change the, the rules of the game here on planet Earth? Um, because that is what we're doing now. Um, it requires developing a much broader, deeper, greater state of awareness. So you might think of the physical reality around us as like a very small percentage of what is actually going on around us. And most of us operate in that, in that very small percentage most of the time. We need to start operating on a daily basis from a deeper space, from an, an awareness of the vastness of being, if you like. I like that phrase, the vastness of being. I feel like it conveys something that um, is a very powerful truth about the nature of reality. Um, now, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Anytime we want to change something, the way to do it, the way to start is to state the desire and then set the intention. So actually make the choice to manifest the desire. And um, I talked, I think in a couple of shows ago, I talked about doing that by um, writing out your intention. Um, but you can get in the habit of, um, of stating your intention every morning before you get out of bed. Some people call it praying, and that's fine. Um, I just talk, and I find it's more, much more effective if I talk out loud. Um, or, you know, at least just under my breath. But don't, I would suggest actually saying the words rather than just thinking them. And I, I usually say something like, please help me manifest a great day today. May everything unfold with ease. May I be surrounded by love and abundance of all good things. And so on and so on. And um, doing that every morning is a really great practice. Now, it doesn't mean that we won't be, be presented with difficulties. But it may mean that those difficulties will unfold with ease. I like that phrase, unfold with ease. Um, you know, life is constantly unfolding around us. It never ends. It never, ever ends. And um, meeting with a, a difficulty is just part of the unfoldment. Um, you can set the intention and decide that it will unfold with ease. So, and the other, uh, uh, there's another thing about changing the game. Well, there are many things about changing the game, actually. One thing is, um, I really recommend talking to other people about this. Um, there are some rules that are very difficult to change, but when you get together as a group and decide to do the changing thing, everything tends to be easier. We'll talk more about this um, after this next commercial break. Um, it certainly is a huge subject, how to change the game, and it's a very important one. Um, the, the whole process of, of accepting, accepting the rules that exist and deciding how to change them, is, it's a, that's a big, big project. Okay, so we're up for a commercial break right now. Um, so we'll be back in a few minutes. Please just hang in there. This is Mikaya Hart with Living in the New Paradigm, brought to us by BBM Global Networks and TuneIn Radio. 
psychologist, master certified coach, and CEO of the executive and organizational development firm, True North Leadership, Dr. Relly Nadler brings his expertise in emotional intelligence to keynotes, consulting, coaching, and training. He is the author of Leader's Playbook and Leading with Emotional Intelligence that lays out tips and tools for effective leadership. Dr. Nadler has designed multi-day executive boot camps for high achievers in Fortune 500 companies and has coached CEOs, presidents, and their staff and developed and delivered innovative leadership programs for such organizations as Anheuser-Busch, BMW, MCI, EDS, DreamWorks Animation, the U.S. Navy, and Vanguard Health Systems. To learn more and get your free iPhone app highlighting his tools with videos, leadership keys, visit www.truenorthleadership.com today. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. Hello, everyone. This is Mikaya Hart back with Living in the New Paradigm, brought to us by BBM Global Networks and TuneIn Radio. Um, I'm talking about how we can change the rules of this game of life here on Earth. Uh, and one of the things I'm suggesting is that you talk with other people about your desire to change the rules. Um because groups, I mean, you are a very powerful being just by yourself. Believe that, please. Um, a group of powerful beings is like an incredibly powerful thing. So it's great to get together in groups and talk about how you want to change the rules of the game. Now, be a little bit careful because you can't change duality. We're going to have dark and light. Um, what you can do is bring an experience of unity into duality. And um, that, that is occurring. Individuals are experiencing, are more and more, I'm hearing stories about experiences of unity, and I have had them myself. Um you can't change you can't change everyone on the planet um, there are some people who don't want to change the rules they're happy with the way things are and in fact what we're seeing right now here on this planet um, in this uh, well it's manifesting as uh, some pretty intense craziness that I'm sure many of you have noticed um, there's um, everything is coming to an extreme where those who want to change the rules are refusing to accept the old rules anymore and those who want to keep the old rules are determinedly living by the old rules I'm not sure exactly what will happen as a matter of fact I have no <laughs> let, me, let me put that differently I have no idea what we will actually experience as happening but um, I do believe that we can both have what we want. There will be a planet where the rules of being human are different from the way they have ever been before. And there will be a planet where those who, well, it'll be the same old planet Earth with an awful lot of darkness. Um, 
as a matter of fact, just as an interesting side, quantum physicists are now agreeing that there are countless numbers of parallel realities. That every time we make a choice that changes the course of our lives, another parallel reality is created. That's a very mind blog, very mind boggling and uh, very interesting. And even the um, even even the quantum physicists are agreeing to that. When the quantum physicists agree to something like that, I, I always think, ah, oh, must, must be happening. Must be happening around us right now. Mm. In any case, um, let me talk. Oh, I, I, one of the things I'm saying here is that, that, that we really, um, it really is a good idea for us to get together in groups. Um, you know, the process we're going through is a, it's the process of awakening or ascension or whatever. Um, and it is, I really want to encourage people to get together in groups um, to talk about their personal experiences and to support each other going through these changes because it's not easy. It's not easy to, you know, yes, okay, we want to change the rules. But change, you know, humans well, I won't say they always have difficulty, but they tend to have difficulty adjusting to changes, even when they really want those changes. So um, we're, and we're talking about a pretty different reality. Uh, we're talking about depths of sensitivity and awareness that are far, far greater than we have ever known before. And they, they can be very uncomfortable initially. Um, we're talking about allowing life force energy to move through us freely. And many people initially find that tremendously un uncomfortable. So another thing I recommend is that you um, do some pretty serious inner work here because you need to learn to differentiate between the kind of relief and comfort that arises when you have accepted some great truth and the kind of relief and comfort that arises when you've done something or when you're doing something that um, brings you kudos in this culture. Those two are often at odds. Um, I have, in fact, I've been accused of being unethical because when I see people enacting violent dramas, it depends on the situation, certainly. I mean, a lot of times I'll interfere and stop what's going on. And there are other times when I can see <clears throat> that these people need to go through whatever they're going through and it's not my job to stop it. Um, so in other words, what I'm saying is that sometimes developing um, uh, deeper states of consciousness, um, deeper levels of consciousness um, and, and awareness, uh, uh, when you do that, you you may react differently. You may react in ways that um, our society does not uh, approve of, that our society considers unethical. Um, in truth, it's not our job to stop other people going through what they need to go through. But I will say that that is one of the hardest things I have ever had to learn. I, I cannot stand to watch people going through pain when I can see very clearly how what they could do to stop it. So anyway, we're going to pick this thread up again in, um, in a little while. We're up for a quick commercial break. This is Mikaya Hart with Living in the New Paradigm, brought to us by 
BBM Global Networks and TuneIn Radio, and I'll be right back. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapula strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Hi, my name is Myra Fox, and I am a survivor. I am the founder of the Castle Lewis I Survived Foundation and the author of a series of books entitled I Survived a Murder Untold, which tells the story of my sister and I who were abandoned and left in the care of a woman who beat us repeatedly. Unfortunately, it resulted in the death of my sister, Castle Lewis, which is revealed in a page-to-page chilling story. After spending time in the foster care system, I've documented my suffering and my loss and ultimately my survival. I'm blessed to work daily in my community and surrounding areas to give back by helping others and feeding the homeless. I want to spread awareness of the dangers of abuse. You can purchase my books and contribute to the Castle Lewis I Survive Foundation by visiting www.castlelewis.com or you can call us at 540-999-8401. Thank you. Introducing BetterHomeAndGarden.com. That's www.betterhomeandgarden.com with just the letter N in Better Home and Garden. Betterhomeandgarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. Betterhomeandgarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, betterhomeandgarden.com. Betterhomeandgarden.com offers you the following products right online. Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor coverings, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. Hello, everyone. This is Mikaya Hart, back with Living in the New Paradigm, brought to us by BBM Global Networks and TuneIn Radio. And I'm talking about how to to make this game of life a little easier and um, how we can, those of us who want to change the rules, how how we can support each other and um, support ourselves. Um. So I'm going to talk now about help that is in unseen form. Um, We are all guided. This planet is guided and every single individual on this planet has guides. Um, Those guides can, um, they can be in various forms um, and it really can depend somewhat on what cultural background you're from, how you perceive them. You may perceive them as angels. Um, You may perceive them as power animals. Um, You may perceive them as archetypal beings like Amazonian, an Amazonian woman, for instance. Um, It doesn't matter at all how you perceive them. And and personally, um, I find that the they can appear in, to me in many, many forms. Um, what's important is to know and believe that they are there and to ask them for help on a very regular basis. Let me repeat that. Ask for help on a very regular basis. 
ask for help when you've lost your way, when you've lost your wallet, when you're tired, when you don't know what to do, when things don't feel great. Ask for help even when things feel great. Ask for help all the time. I said, well, I suggested earlier that every morning before you get out of bed, you um, you have a little talk with, well, I, I you know, who you, th- who you think you're talking about varies from individual, individual to individual. And um, that's something we'll, that's a, a whole show. And uh, perhaps actually that is what my next show will be about. What do we mean by the vastness of being? What do we mean by the word God? Um, in any case, I want to say a little about myself. Um, my, I'm an author. And my most recent book is Life, Lies and Sex, A User's Guide to Being in a Body. And a great deal of what I'm saying is written in that book. I very strongly suggest that if you find what I'm saying interesting, buy that book. You don't have to read it all the way through. You can open the book at a, at any page and um, there will be something on that page that will help you to um, solve whatever is sol- whatever is required. That will help you with whatever. Um, so once again, my name is Mikaya Hart. My website is mikayahart.org, and I do do spiritual counseling, so you can contact me through my website. Um, so this is Mikaya Hart with Living in the New Paradigm, and I'm signing off now. Um, thank you to BBM Global Networks and tune in radio for bringing us on the air. You've been listening to Living in the New Paradigm with your host, Mikaya. Get what you choose and choose what you get each week here on Mikaya Hart's Living in the New Paradigm. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.